Hi guys, it's Emily and in this video I'm going to be going over how to solve another true length problem. So in this question it asks us to find the true lengths of lines E4 and G2. So in the image that we're given we are given the same part but in two different views and the way that I can tell is if I first make a folding line here separating the two views I can see from the subscripts of the points so here we have EH, FH, 3H and so on that means that we are in our horizontal plane and then from the subscripts below that in the view below we have the subscript F um, and so that means that we are in the frontal plane and we just call this uh, the HF folding line for short so another way that we identify that we are in or that we have one part but we are seeing two views of it is because if we make extension lines going from the horizontal plane to the frontal plane we can see that all the points that make up this part uh, line up and they're also labeled in the same positions as well so we can see that the general shape of the part we are given is kind of like a truncated pyramid so I'm just drawing a quick sketch of that. And so we want to figure out the true lengths of the slanted edges of, um, of this part. So we want to figure out the true length of line E4 and G2. So we can see if we highlight them in both views that neither of these lines are parallel nor perpendicular to the folding line that we are given. So we can see that these are on a slant um, and they are not parallel to our HF folding line. And if we were even to draw our profile um, view over here, or a profile plane, and it would just be P for short. And this would be F because we would be in our front view uh, or our front plane. So if I drew this PF folding line, we can see that lines E4 and G2 are not parallel nor perpendicular to this folding line as well. So that means that neither views give, neither views that are given of these two lines are the true lengths of these lines. Some true lengths in this problem um, that do exist within these two views would be would be lines EF, HF, EH, and FG. And the reason why we know that these are true length lines is because we have two adjacent views um, of the same part. And, and so if we look at line EH we can see in our front view that it shows up as a point and the same thing goes for line FG so F line FG in the horizontal plane shows up as a point view in our frontal plane and these lines are also perpendicular to our HF folding line they are also parallel to our FP folding line. 
So that means it has the criteria of being a true length line in our horizontal plane. So we can say that FG with a subscript H is a true length or TL for short. And the same thing with line EH. For lines EF in the horizontal plane and HG, we can see that those correspond to line H, G, and EF in the frontal plane as well. And these lines are both parallel to our HF folding line. And so that also provides us with the criteria um, showing us that those two lines are, are true length lines as well. So e, line EF in both our horizontal and frontal planes are true length. And similarly, line HG in both of our views that are given, so in both uh, the horizontal plane and the frontal plane are true length, are true length lines. In the case of Four one and three two, those exist as perpendicular lines to our folding line HF, and they are also parallel to our folding line FP. And in our frontal plane, they show up as point views. So that is very similar to the criteria for the uh, lines FG and EH. So we know that lines 4H or 4, 1 in the horizontal plane and 3, 2 in the horizontal plane are both true lengths as well. In the case of line 4, 3, we see that line 4, 3 is a slanted line in the horizontal or in the frontal plane but it is a parallel line to our hf folding line in our horizontal plane so that means because we have one view where the line is parallel to the folding line in the adjacent view that means that this line here is a true length And so now that's why we need to find uh, the true lengths of lines E4 and G2. The other lines that we would want to find as well that aren't true lengths would be F3 uh, and H1 and also 1, 2. Um, so I'm going to solve two of them. I'm just going to solve lines E4 and G2 because the process is pretty much the same for uh, finding all these true length lines. Okay, so I'm just going to erase a few of these highlighted parts that I drew and then we can get started on the solution. Okay, so the first step in finding the true length of a line, um, if we're using the auxiliary view method, is to choose the line that we want to find the true length of 
So I think I'm going to start with uh, line E4. So I, so yeah, I'm going to do line E4 first. And the first step is to choose a plane as well, um, where we're given a view of this line. So I think I'm going to start in the frontal plane and uh, I'm going to make my auxiliary view uh, off of my frontal plane. So first identify where the line is. So I can see that the line is right here. So the first step is to make a line that is parallel to the line in one of the views. You can also do this in your horizontal plane as well. It's just I know that I have enough room to um, to place my auxiliary view in my frontal plane. So that's why I'm choosing um, my frontal plane to construct my auxiliary view off of. And so I'm just going to make tick marks to show that these are parallel lines. And then we also want to label our folding line. So I'm labeling it F1, F because we are still in our frontal plane, and 1 just means that we are drawing our first auxiliary view. Now the next step is to make perpendicular extension lines off of the points uh, of our line. So. The easiest way for me to do that is to draw parallel lines or a parallel line next to next to my folding line and then all I need to do is just rotate it 90 degrees. So now I have a perfect perpendicular line. And this line, this extension line is going to go off of points 4 and E, because that's the line that we are trying to find the true length of. So I put an extension line that's perpendicular to my folding line on point 4 in my frontal plane, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to copy this line and place it on point E in my frontal plane. Okay, and the next step is to count two folding lines back. So this would be one and then two. So my first folding line that I'm counting backward from is folding line F1, and then my second one would be FH or HF. And so once we've done this, we are now back in our horizontal plane. And we want to take the perpendicular distance from our horizontal plane to the points E and 4. So I measured the red line measures from our folding line to our point E. Now the next step is to take this distance and place this distance on our extension line E where I could be on that touches our folding line. So I'm one of these legs is touching the folding line and I'm also going to rotate this. So and then I had to replace it. So I'm just placing this on our folding line. And you can see that it is also touching our folding line F1. So you place it on a folding line, uh, on the most recent folding line that you drew. And then this other, uh, the, the point that is not touching the folding line, F1 will be our point E. And we're going to do the same thing with our point uh, Four. So 
remember we count two folding lines back one two we are in our horizontal plane and then we take the perpendicular distance from the folding line to point four in our horizontal plane and then we take that distance and I'm just going to rotate it and we place this so that this line is touching our folding line F1 and it's also on our extension line 4 in our frontal plane and then the point that is not touching our folding line F1 will be our point 4 and then the last step is just to connect E to 4 and now we have gotten our true length line or TL for short. And that's how you find, that's how you would find the true length of uh, line E4. Now similarly for line G2, we're just going to do the same exact process. So I'm just going to, actually, I think I'm going to move what I wrote up here, just down here, just so I have room. Because now I think I'm going to construct my true length line of G2 uh, in my horizontal plane. So uh, following the same exact steps, the first thing that we want to do is make a parallel line to our G2 to our G2 line. So we can see that it's parallel with G2 and I'm just going to move it here. You just want to make sure that you have enough um, I guess space to draw your auxiliary view. That's what is most important. You can place your parallel line wherever you like. You just need to make sure that you have enough room for your auxiliary view. Okay, and so the next step is to... Oh, I almost forgot to label. So I want to label my folding line. And so we are in the horizontal plane. So I'm going to name it H on this side and then 2 on the opposite side because this is our second auxiliary view. Now the next step is to make our extension lines. And these extension lines are going off of points 2 and point G in our horizontal plane. And these are going to be perpendicular to our H2 folding line. So first making a parallel line and then I'm just rotating it 90 degrees. And I'm placing this line on uh, point two in my horizontal plane and then I'm going to copy this line and place that on point G. Okay, and then the next thing to do is count two folding lines back from the most recent folding line that we drew. So one and then two. And we're going to be working within our frontal plane to grab the distances uh, from from our frontal plane. So if we recall, the process for doing this would be to start on our HF folding line and take the distance, the perpendicular distance from the folding line HF to our point. So I'm going to point G. And then we're going to take this distance and we're going to place it on our newest folding line. And 
And then the the point that is not touching the H2 folding line is going to be our point G. And then similarly for to find point uh, 2, we are going to count our two folding lines back, 1, 2, and we are in our frontal plane. And now we are taking the perpendicular distance from our folding line FH down to point 2. And then we're going to take that distance from our, our folding line HF to point 2. And we're going to place it on our newest folding line on the extension line of 2 in our horizontal plane. But technically we are in our auxiliary view here. So I'm going to label this 2. And then the last step is just to connect these two points. And this is our truth length. And then you would just repeat these steps if you wanted to find the other lines, uh, the other incline lines in this problem. So I hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.